Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with a wrestling recap for you this morning. And today I'm going to be talking about Survivor Series 2019. Now this is the 33rd annual Survivor Series wrestling event from the WWE. And it was live from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Chicago is a great, great wrestling city. And uh, for all of you fans who were chanting CM Punk the whole night, fuck you, I hate you, stop it, please die. Anyhow. Uh, might as well just talk about the kickoff show just real fast because it does kind of tie into the story of the night. There were three uh, preview uh, pre-show matches. Uh, there was a battle royal won by SmackDown uh, members. Uh, oh, fuck, I can't remember. I can't remember which tag team won the tag team battle royal, but it was a SmackDown. Oh, the revival, I think maybe. I don't know. A SmackDown. No, 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 no. It was a uh, Ziggler and Root. It was a pre-show match. You know. Mm. I was talking most of it. <laughs> then there was a cru cruiserweight title triple threat match. It was the first of like 19 triple threat matches tonight. And uh, Leo Rush retained the cruiserweight title to pick up a win for NXT and to keep the cruiserweight title on NXT. Uh, and then there was the triple threat tag team match, which was actually like the best fucking match of the night. Uh, but it was uh, you know, Red Dragon, War Machine, or whatever the fuck they're calling them. And, uh, the New Day, and, uh, the Viking Warriors, War Machine, the War Raiders. Oh my god, those guys, they won, the Raw team won, to even everything up going into the big show. So then we get to the show. Show kicks off, and god, there were just so many announcers here tonight, and, uh, the opening match was the first ever Triple Threat Survivor Series match, which there would be two of tonight. Uh, this one was for the women. Team Raw. With Charlotte Flair, Natalya Nightheart, Sarah Logan, and the women's tag team champions, the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, and Kari Zane. Uh, team SmackDown was Sasha Banks, Carmella, Nikki Cross, Lacey Evans, and Dana Brooke. And Team NXT was Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai, Candice, LeRae, um, Tony Storm, and Bianca Belair. Hey, baby. <laughs> go watch your cartoon. No, no, no. Go watch your cartoon. I watched your show with my daughters last night. First time they ever got to watch a wrestling pay per view with their dad. And uh, yeah, they had a blast. Um, and the, the baby just kept kicking and everything and stuff like that. And my daughter was booing the villains. And it, it was really fun to watch a, the show with the girls. Uh, yeah, it was really, really something else. Uh, anyhow, um,. Or was it? Oh well, yeah, so so the women's uh, in it, uh, uh, Survivor Series match was was just it was terrific. It was a terrific match, great story. Uh, early in the match, there's this big brawl on the on, uh, on, on the floor, and Io and Candice are um, uh, eliminated uh, because they can't continue because of mainly the uh, or they're helped to the back because they can't continue because you know the beatdown in this match plus they went through war games the night before. Uh, they just can't go on. By the way, watch my war games review. I liked war games. And also, I kind of, you know, usually I love the, all the teams coming in together, but we didn't get that awesome entrance from Io Shirai. Uh, anyhow, uh, the Kabuki Warriors, or Asuka, spit screen miss in her captain's face, Charlotte Flair getting Charlotte eliminated and getting herself counted out. Eventually, Raw is completely eliminated, bringing down Sasha Banks. Right point. Only Sasha Banks on SmackDown versus only Rhea Ripley on NXT. They have, go back and forth, a nice match. Sasha gets her in the bank statement, and then like that, Candice LeRae and Io Shirai re hit the ring because they weren't officially eliminated. They're playing possum. It was great, and uh, there's uh, and it, just like that, it's three on one, and Rhea Ripley wins, and NXT picks up the win with the three uh, with three survivors. It was an excellent match, great storytelling, and there's lots of other good stuff. There was just brilliant um uh, natural disaster charlotte hit out of nowhere on carmella this was great stare down between the the, the former tag team the sky pirates io io shrai and um uh, and uh, kari zane it was a very very good match i really enjoyed it i also want to point out uh after back-to-back -back victories between war machine uh, uh, war games on set hold, hold on baby um, uh, uh, War Games on Saturday and Survivor Series on Sunday. I, I mean, I gotta believe that um, uh, those that Rhea Ripley and Candice LeRae are now number one contenders for the women's tag titles. Go grab this thing. I'll give you a muffin. That's what I like. 
Backstage, we have uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Owens getting ready for his match. Seth Rollins comes in. They're both on Team Raw. Rollins kind of confronts him. You know, why are you on Team? Why did you go on NXT last night and join their team? You know, those guys were fighting those guys tonight. And all this, and, you know, Owens' his whole act. Yeah, I got a bad reputation for betraying my friend, but Jesus Christ, you know, you you betrayed the, 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 the shield. You know, pot calling the kettle black here, buddy. Uh... So go to the next match is the uh, the mid card title triple threat match for the Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura, the U.S. No, Champion AJ don't Styles. Kill me. Will you relax? I'm shooting a video, butt munch. No, I don't. I said not to kill you, you didn't say that at all. You just freaked out after the fact. Anyhow, it was a good match. A lot of competition, lots of back and forth, lots of high spots. It ends with AJ Styles hits the, fab, uh, the fabulous form, the phenomenal forearm, and uh, uh, Roder Strong throws him out of the ring, pins Shinsuke Nakamura, and gets another win for NSC, bringing NSC up to three to one to one. Next up is the uh, we're gonna take a break from the the, uh, the the brand supremacy for a bit for the title time. NXT Championship on the line. Pete Dunne won a shot at Adam Cole Bebe's championship the night before by winning a triple threat match against Damian Priest and Killian Dane. Uh, this is a solid match. I mean, just it was just as good as you thought these guys. I mean, I say solid match. This was a great match. Hey, the great hard hitting back and forth, real NXT style guys hitting you know Finisher City, uh, 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 Canadian Destroyer. Uh, I don't know what he calls that spinning pump handle face plant. Uh, Pete Dunne does. I don't know what he calls it, but that's a badass move. Uh, when I first saw it, I kind of thought it was a little convoluted, but, you know, it's really grown on me. Uh, so, uh, go back and forth to finish this. Pete Dunn goes for that a second time. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Cole reverses it into the Canadian Destroyer and hits like a Shining Wizard. I think they call it the, uh, the Rough Shot. Um, it hits him in the back of the head with the Shining Wizard and retains his NXT Championship. Great match. Next up is Universal Championship, and there's... Just uh, I think it was during the pre-show, this this great um, uh, thing backstage where um, uh, The Miz you know, is trying to pep talk, you know, get Daniel Bryan riled up for the title match, and Ryan, Bryan's like, you know, just going to hell on my face. Uh, so the Universal title's up next, Dafine Bray White defending against um, Daniel Bryan. And I hate the fact that the lights, those goddamn red lights were back. Enough of the red lights, guys. You're going to ruin the, this title run for me. But, you know, it was a good, solid... This is when my daughter Amy really started getting into the show, this match. Uh, there's lots, uh, you know, high-flying, like the big jumps, like the running knee off, off the uh, apron. Brian did. Uh, uh, ultimately, the finish was, you know, uh, what's his name? Brian got caught in the mandible claw, and Wyatt pinned him real McFoley style. I don't like when they tap it. If you ever played No Mercy... Uh, you know, the guys will tap out to the mandible claw, but I don't ever, I don't think I ever saw a single guy ever actually tap out to the mandible claw or the tongue and death grip from Ming or King Haku. Uh, it was, it was, it was a knockout move, sure, but the whole thing was to barrel you down and force you to the mat, you know, choke you out, but you still got pinned. Anyhow. So next up is the Men's Survivor Series match, and all I say, this is of the main card was the best match of the night for me. Team Raw. Is Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Ricochet. Team SmackDown is Roman Reigns, King Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman, Mustafa Ali, and Shorty G, Chad Gable. And Team NXT is Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, the U United K Kingdom champion Walter, Damian Priest, and the original bro, Matt Riddle. I did it. All right. So, <laughs> um, there, there was a lot of good, good Good stuff. Good storytelling. Good uh, uh, building. Um, one of my favorite parts of the match is when Baron Cor when the breakdown. Like there's two guys on t each team, and Baron Corbin is in. Uh, Roman tags himself in, and Roman Reigns is face screaming at him on the mat. Why are you messing with the broom? <laughs> and uh, you know, Roman Reigns ain't having enough of it. Super punch, spears him. Just lets gets the guy eliminated. I'd rather just fight by myself. <laughs> it was uh, it was really cool. Um, I got to point out Ricochet. Was Ricochet, did he seriously wear Batwoman attire to this match? What in God's name? Enough of this, alright? If you're going to do cross-dressing and wrestling, do it right, like gold dust. Anyhow, uh, the finish, it came down to Roman Reigns and Keith Lee. Lots of back and forth. This crowd was insanely behind Keith Lee. They went NXT to win this. He, he, Lee hits this hellacious pop-up powerbomb. Roman eventually gets a spear and wins it. There's a lot of respect, you know, long stare down of respect. 
uh, Keith Lee does like this Japanese uh, bow to him, and Roman Reigns hits out, you know, the shield uh, fist bump, and, you know, it was really, it was a great match. It was a great moment. It was a great match. It was a highlight of the night for me. Next up was the WWE Championship. No holds barred. Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio Jr. And considering this was the match, this was the feud that kept me from just completely calling off WWE entirely. And watching this show, I watched this show for this match, and it was dog shit. It was piece of shit. To, you know, quote the guys on Botchamania, it's minus five stars. I could not be more disappointed. Well, first off, I love Rey Mysterio coming out dressed up like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, but if you're not going to do the dance, you know, just don't bother. Anyhow, uh, the goddamn uh, match starts with, of course, Brock Lesnar destroying Rey. I was expecting that. Uh, Brock Lesnar wins. I was expecting that. But Dominic runs out to throw in the towel, and Brock stops him and beats up Dominic. The two of them double team him, double six with nine, back to back frog splashes. Brock kicks out, then Brock hits an F5 and wins. Um,. I hated the fact that Rey Mysterio needed outside interference to uh, just to get an upper hand. I hated the fact that at least the match went five minutes instead of like 20 minutes with this awful SummerSlam long squashes against Triple H and, and John Cena. But this was just the kind of fucking Brock Lesnar match that I absolutely goddamn hate. I hated this match. It was heartbreaking, and I kind of feel like Chicago felt the way I did. I mean, I just could not have been more disappointed. This. I mean, I wanted a match. I wanted a story. And if, you know, it was just going to be Brock Lesnar going out there and destroying Rey Mysterio, they could, they should have done the throw in the towel. Uh, you know, Dominic comes in, throws in the towel, and then the story actually could have moved somewhere from there. Now it's like, you know, you know, Rey Mysterio, Dominic's questioning his father. Rey Mysterio thinking more, should I just retire? Or can I just not trust my son? You know, have people lost faith in me? Instead, it's just, just another fucking loss for Rey Mysterio. You know, and after getting squashed at WrestleMania in less than a minute against Samoa Joe, and then surrendering the U.S. title because, you know what, I mean, it was, it was an admirable, great babyface thing. It's something only Rey Mysterio Jr. would do, but it's just they're making him look so fucking weak. Rey Mysterio looks just pathetic right now, and, you know, he's one of my favorite heroes in the history of wrestling, and it's dog shit. I'm pissed. Fuck that. Okay, sorry. Main event time. Now, I don't really understand why the women's triple threat was the main event. It's not really like it had the build for it. And in a lot of ways, after, you know, the heartbreak of the WWE title match and the greatness of the of, of the men's survivors, it kind of felt like the crowd was a little burned out for this, um, uh, for this match. The, the match didn't get the energy it deserved, even though the girls put on a good match. Shayna Baszler, the NXT champion, Becky Lynch, the man, the Raw Women's Champion, and Bayley, the SmackDown Women's Champion. All the girls have really been on a tear right now. Really competitive back and back. Uh, Becky Lynch was clearly the only face involved. Uh, she takes a table spot on the floor, uh, uh, leaving the two heels alone. Shayna catches Bayley in her chokehold, and Shayna wins. The right girl won, and by the end of the night, you got smacked, uh, NXT dominated with four wins, SmackDown with two, and Raw with one. Now, you could say Raw didn't really need the win. Uh, it could get away with just having one win for the night, but no wins on the main card. And after, you know, completely sweeping the year before, uh, I don't know, tie on to the fact that you got NXT going toe-to-toe -to -toe with AEW on Wednesdays nights, and Foss just bought SmackDown. Feel more and more like, you know, the establishment, the, um, uh, you know, the centerpiece of WWE wrestling, Monday Night Raw, for nearly 27 years now, uh, is almost an afterthought, at least right now. Anyhow, uh, this is my long review, my long distracted review. Hope you liked Andy's little uh, catching. I was going to shoot it with her but uh, earlier, but she would not sit still. That's why I shot this alone. <laughs> Anyhow, um, hope you all liked this review. Hope, you know, you share, comment. I mean, comments would be cool. I don't care about share. I don't know why I said that. I don't think I've ever been... Oh, except my, my dad shares my stuff on Facebook. God bless you, Dad. I love you. Anyhow, I'm Jake Davis, and I'll catch you on the fly.